Today we're going to disassemble a Spencer rifle. This is the long version of the Spencer. The disassembly is pretty much the same whether you're doing the rifle or the carbine. To start off with, we're going to take the sling off. That's easy. If you have a carbine, it may not have a sling, so you don't have to worry about it. If you're using a rifle, um, you just want to take it off because it makes things easier to clean. Okay, with the sling off, we'll set that aside. That'll go back on when we finish things up. At this point, it's time to go ahead and start our general disassembly. I'm going to leave the camera pointed down at the workpiece so that you can see what's going on. And I may change the camera positions from time to time to try to focus in on what we're working with. The first step to disassembling the rifle or the carbine is to take off the forestock. You don't absolutely have to do it but it just to me makes things easier and I'm sure that I've made a good clean uh, of the barrel that way. To take the barrel off we have to remove the bands. The bands are held on by these springs uh, and so you just press down on the springs and slide off the bands most of the time, sometimes. Uh, some of the bands will be loose like that one and this one. You may want to use a rubber mallet uh, to move the bands. You don't want to use a hammer or anything hard because that could mar up either the band or the barrel. Uh, you don't want to mess up the finish. So uh, I use a rubber hammer to, uh, to do this. And all you need is to give them a little tap. That'll usually do it. Remember I'm pushing in on the uh, release at the bottom. Giving it a little tap. That'll get it going. And that's got it. Once, uh, once that's done, we'll slide the bands off. I usually set the bands aside in order. It's pretty obvious where they're going to go, and if you have a carbine, you only have one to worry about. From there, we need to take out uh, the single screw that holds the forestock on. For that, this has kind of a narrow slot, so you're going to have to have a screwdriver that has a very thin blade. In this case, I'm using a screwdriver that I've actually put on a grinder and ground it down so that it's thin. Or you can use a set of gunsmith um, screwdrivers, uh, which they sell in kits and have very thin ones uh, that you can use. That way you don't bugger up the, uh, the slot on the screw. In any case, this is not very tight, or it shouldn't be. It ought to come right loose, and then when it does, you can lift off the uh, four stock and set that aside. I like to keep everything in order when I'm working. That way I know what goes where, and it just helps the disassembly and assembly go faster. Okay, we got the four stock off, and we're ready to move on to something else. The next and probably most important part of the disassembly comes at this point, and that's when we remove the breech block from the uh, breech section of the rifle. To do this, you're going to have to have a either a screwdriver that is pretty short, uh, or a screwdriver like this. Uh, this is a short model that you're able to get a lot of pressure on and be able to push down on that screw. That screw is going to be very tight. It's going to be hard to get out, and you don't want to strip it or booger up the slot on it. Um, and so that's what these uh, short screwdrivers or, or torque screwdrivers are for. Uh, in any case, slip that screwdriver in there and then press down firmly and you'll break it loose. That way the screwdriver doesn't slip. You don't mess up the threads. And you can go ahead and either back it out all the way with uh, that short screwdriver or you can use one of your other screwdrivers then to remove the screw the rest of the way. You want to back it out. You'll feel when it lets go. Um, to get it out, you sometimes can push on the breech block a little bit, wiggle it back and forth, and pull it out. Um, you may end up having to take something and stick it carefully between the top of the head and the breech. You don't want to 
to uh, scratch up anything so you got to do it carefully um, I usually can get it out if I just kind of wiggle things and uh, and get it to remove once it's out you see it'll just fall right out the bottom and uh, that breech block, breech block is out you want to hold on to that screw very important piece I like to uh, to use rags when disassembling things you, if you don't have a, a magnetic cup um, set the uh, set the screws and things on rags that way they don't roll away off your table while you're doing the disassembly uh, in this case though I have a magnetic cup and so the screw will just uh, stick right there and it's uh, it's not going anywhere for the next part of the disassembly we're going to continue on with the breech block so we're going to set the rifle aside we'll just kind of move it out of the way for the moment and go ahead and tear down the rest of this assembly first step here is we got to remove this small screw this one can be kind of a booger also uh, again you're gonna have to search for a screwdriver that fits or buy a screwdriver and grind down the tip until you uh, get one that works for you same as with the lever action screw you're gonna want to push down real hard here so that the screw doesn't or the screwdriver doesn't slip out of the slot this is also going to be tight but not as tight as that one when you get that done you have to kind of push down on this uh, to get the screw out we have that there we can set it aside the lever will actually just come right out then we're going to set it aside the breech block comes off the spring we're going to set the spring in there and then you have the lower breech block the lower breech block we'll work on later it there's not a lot to do other than just general cleaning with that so we'll set it aside too still got a ways to go here with the uh, upper breech block you have two screws those two screws have to be removed you can use the same screwdriver that you used for that small screw just a moment ago or you can use a slightly larger one you just have to find what's comfortable for you in any case same deal these are going to be tight so we're going to loosen these pressing down hard yep okay once those are loose we can take those out and set those aside those are important to hold on to now here's a tricky part the the firing pin inside of here is spring loaded the chances of it actually just springing right out um, when you take this slide off are pretty small but nevertheless I still kind of keep it shielded a little bit when I do just to be sure it doesn't spring out and then I'm chasing all over the shop for it the slide as you see there slides out there you go we're going to set it aside now here you can see the pusher for the firing pin to get the pusher out and here's another one of those areas where it could spring out you want to take your screwdriver or something else and this is a little ridge right here push forward on that little ridge and raise up on that pusher and then you can take the pusher out set it aside your firing pin and spring will come out of the bottom these are very small and you don't want to lose these so set those aside where you can find them and that is the disassembly of your upper breech block with our breech block out we can now go back to the disassembly of the rifle uh, I'm usually take the lock off next you don't absolutely have to take the lock off every time um, however I, I kind of uh, do it to me I think it's easier to go ahead and take it off than to risk getting water down in it or uh, having it get rusty so switch my screwdrivers again and then I want to remove the lock bolt which is right here on a carbine the lock bolts uh, will be about the same place there'll be two of them here uh, if I remember correctly you only have to take out the rear one on the carbine the front one is just to hold on the sling bar that um, lock bolt can be set aside the other 
screw that holds the lock is here on the front. Again, we're pressing down hard so we don't mess up the slot. You'll have to put the lock at full cock in order to get the screw out. You'll notice that that is not really a lock bolt, it's just kind of a, a bolt or a small screw. So uh, in any case, take those out, set them where you'll know what they are, and then you can just lift out your lock. You just want to check it. I see that I got a little patch of rust right there developing on the inside, so that's something I'm going to have to take care of during our cleanup phase. If you want, if it helps you, it makes you feel better, um, you can always uh, reinsert the, uh, the lock bolt in the lock like that just so you know where it is and it'll kind of sit up on its own if that's something you want to do. Um, I do that occasionally. It helps me keep up with things. This one will not do that, so you got to hold on to that one. All right. Lock is out, and we are essentially stripped down to the cleaning point here. Uh, the only other thing to remove that you absolutely have to remove is the magazine follower. Um, just slip that out and set it aside. And then we're kind of stripped down. Now you can, if you, if you just want to go for it, you know what I mean, you can take off um, all of this um, trigger assembly here. I usually don't do that. The only thing I do check is to be sure there's no rust or anything like that and then I make sure that the screws are tight um, when I get ready to do the reassembly. Uh, there's no reason uh, to really take this spring-loaded um, cartridge guide out. Uh, you can, it won't hurt anything. Uh, that has a screw right here that will release this. Just hold on to that spring because it is one that wants to pop out and take off uh, when, you, when you take that screw out. And that's it. Then we're ready to, uh, to move on to the cleaning phase. The next piece of equipment that you're going to want to have is a bore snake. Uh, they make a bore snake in 50 caliber, which is what you're going to need if you have the Spencer in 5650 caliber. They also make them for a 45, which is appropriate for use if you have the 4440 or 45 Long Colt Spencer. Um, it's basically like a big polyester nylon rope that has a wire brush embedded in it here and then a string with a weight on it so that you can pull it through. I've used cleaning rods and all those sorts of things but really nothing does the job like, uh, like one of these boar snakes. So that's what we're going to use here to, uh, to clean the rifle out. If you're cleaning at home obviously you'll want to take your rifle outside to do this cleanup procedure because it's kind of messy. I have a big uh, sink here in the workshop that I use. I find that easy to work with. Some people like to use warm or hot water uh, to clean out the barrel. That does work well. It's not absolutely necessary, however, and so I'm going to be cleaning with cold water today. What I usually do when I get started is I have a cork that's been shaved down on the end that fits the bore and I go ahead and stick that in the end there to, uh, to close it up. Then I can turn it over here. I generally take some Dawn dishwashing detergent or some other kind of uh, heavy duty soap and I put a few drops right down the barrel. Just spray a little bit in there. Doesn't have to be a lot. And then I go ahead and fill the barrel up with water. With the barrel full, I can just sort of set this aside here to let it soak for a minute. This is where having the um, forestock off comes in handy. If you have the forestock still attached, um, you can just be more careful when you put the water down the, uh, down the barrel there so as not to get a bunch underneath the wood. And potential there is to split the wood or to make it swell up or to get rust on the barrel underneath where the water is trapped between the wood and the barrel. In any case, we're going to let that sit there for a minute and uh, we'll come back and check on it here in just a few. Alright, we have let the barrel sit for just a few minutes. We're going to pull our cork out. I'm, I've moved the camera a little closer so that you can see the nastiness that comes out of here, hopefully. 
actually not too bad. It uh, had a little black, a little gray water, but uh, not too, too dirty. Of course, uh, it'll depend on how much you've shot recently. Now you just want to go ahead and take your water here and rinse out the barrel some more. And you should see the water, it'll come out a little gray to begin with. And then it'll turn clear and you're just washing out that extra soap and powder residue. I try not to get any water in the upper parts around where the lock goes in or anything like that. Mainly we're just concerned with the barrel. So we've washed it out now. Once you've rinsed out the barrel, you can use a toothbrush, an old toothbrush like this, to clean up the crevices here between where the barrel face and the breech block interface that's got kind of a sharp point here and there. You can use that toothbrush just to give it a little scrub. That'll usually get the gunk out. You can uh, put a little soap on there if you want to, if it needs it. And just give that a little scrub there. Any other places where you see a little gunk, a little gunpowder residue and that sort of thing, you can give those a little scrub. Here's another spot right in there, that slot underneath. That's a good thing to scrub out. And you can do the sides if you want to. Basically anywhere here. The only thing is I try to keep the water out of the lock area here and keep it from, from going down the butt or anything. So we've scrubbed that out. And we give it a little rinse off. And we're ready to move on to using our boar snake. We have our rifle now that we've just cleaned out with water. We have our boar snake. And I usually put on a pair of gloves if I'm doing this by myself. If you got a, somebody to help you, uh, it goes a little easier. I'm doing it by myself, so I'm going to put on a pair of gloves here. What you want to do is take this boar snake and take the weighted end and drop that right down the barrel. It'll come out the end here where you can grab it and then you just want to pull it through. And this is where it's a little tight. If you have a helper they can hold the rifle while you pull the uh, boar snake through. In this case I don't so I'm just gonna have to work a little harder here to pull it through. There we go. And that'll usually do the majority of the cleaning. However, I uh, sometimes like to run it back and forth a few times. Of course, you can always go from the muzzle in the other way if it needs it. I like to put in the boar snake. Till the weight comes out the end. Grab hold of that weight. And then I will pull this through until the loop at the end of the rope section gets almost into the barrel. But stop there. I'll show you that. Okay, so I pulled it through until you just have this little loop sticking out. With that little loop sticking out, then I can pull back the other way. Grab a hold of that and pull it back. And you'll pull the brush back out and you feel it let go. And you can do that a few times, back and forth. Pull it in. And back out. You're just really cleaning up that chamber area where the cartridge goes in. That's usually the area that's the most fouled of anything in the barrel or is the most critical part to get clean and pull it out at the last and then you can always have a look and see hold it up to the light oh yeah yep looks good it's real shiny so uh, in any case we've cleaned the barrel now it's time to start oiling everything up clean the other small components put this thing back together all right we're at the point now where we're going to work on the small parts before we begin our reassembly Here's where you may want to have some water, warm water. I like to use warm water with a little soap in it. Uh, 
cold water will work. It's, uh, it just is a, seems a little more effective to use uh, warm water for these small parts. And what I do is I just go ahead and um, heat up my water, put a little soap in there, and then I just put my big parts in. I put the lever, I put the lower breech block, I put the upper breech block, I put the slide, I put the pusher, uh, and I think that's about it. Oh, the, uh, the uh, firing pin and spring, I usually just leave them attached to each other, it doesn't really make any difference. And I put those there as well. And you can see, even now, I don't know if it shows up on the camera, but here they've been in there a few seconds, and the black crud is just sort of starting to fall off of them. Uh, so within just a couple of minutes, they'll be good to go, ready to take out and get cleaned up. And so what I'll probably do now is just sort of take those out, clean them up uh, a piece at a time, and show you how the reassembly goes for this. Let's start our reassembly by working with the firing pin and spring. Uh, my water is pretty hot, so I uh, picked it up here with a pair of pliers. Okay, firing pin and spring. There's not a lot of cleanup with this. It's a pretty small piece. I usually just take my rag, wipe it down good, get some of the black crud off of it. Um, however, I also do an extra step with this piece this is one of those problem areas with these Spencer reproductions. Uh, those pins sometimes want to stick forward and there's some reasons for that having to do with the shoulder on the pins um, not being shaped exactly right or the pins themselves being a little long. In any case, I've found that in order to make it run more consistently, more smoothly, that uh, it's helpful to um, be sure that there's no burrs or you haven't beaten a shoulder into the pin during your last reenactment. The primers are softer. We're using shotgun primers in our blanks than the primers in a um, rifle uh, cartridge. So the, uh, the pin moves forward further in the block and can get a little bit um, buggered up here at the top. In any case, there's your pin. I have some ultra fine emery paper. I believe this is about uh, four or six hundred grit. I'm just going to cut off a little piece of it, and then I'm going to take my pin here, kind of wrap it around the end, and I just want to be sure that that pin, and especially the transition of the pin here where it flares out that that's really clean doesn't have any rust on it um, there's no fouling buildup there and this will also take down any shoulder if you started to beat a shoulder in that's particularly common with a newer reproduction that hadn't been shot a lot that can happen this will help and then you can just kind of gauge um, when you've done enough of course it'll be shiny when you get done instead of black and then if you take your fingernail and kind of run it down from the flared end down to the straight end just to feel if there's any burrs or if there's any uh, sort of shoulder I don't feel anything on this one this one's pretty straight and smooth and so we're done with that uh, toss my piece of sandpaper just give that a little wipe stick my spring back onto the firing pin and I can set that aside now. Um, just a little tip, if you lose that spring from your Spencer, which happened to me once right before an event, uh, a ballpoint pin spring works great. You just take it out, cut it off to the right length and uh, that works fine. In fact, that's what's, what I have on mine right here. So Let's set that back in my magnetic tray there. The next piece we're going to want to get out and work on is going to be the upper breech block. Woo! Water's still a little hot. Okay, there we go. Upper breech block. Dry it off good. Be sure it's nice and dry all over. Uh, here is the area you're going to want to concentrate on, or a couple areas. One is this hole in the bottom here. Just want to be sure you get something to get in there. and. Uh, dry that out real good. The other area is here in the in the slot that's cut out where your 
firing pin and pusher goes. You can see mine's still got a little crud down in there. So uh, I am going to use a screwdriver here to help me get in there and clean some of that crud out. And you can see there was still crud in there. So we're going to clean that out a little bit. I'm just kind of using the blade of my screwdriver to push that rag around. Yep. And clean it up. That's good. You could use a tooth, I mean a uh, Q-tip. That's what I'm thinking of. You could use a Q-tip. That would be a good, good way to get in there and clean. And uh, now you can see that uh, it's all shiny and clean. Wipe off the slot, the slot here. It's kind of a um, triangle shape. Just want to run your rag in there and get it cleaned up. Everything looks clean and dry for that. So we're going to set that aside. Let's now move on to the pusher. And grab my pusher out of the hot water here. Yep, there we go. This is the pusher for the firing pin and dry that off. Not much to this. You may want to blow the water out of the holes. Yep, it's got a little bit of crud right there and actually it has a little bit of Loctite um, on it. You don't want, this is a part that doesn't ever get seen so you don't really have to worry about the finish. So I'm just going to use my the flat of my screwdriver here and just kind of scrape off some of that dried on Loctite. I don't know if you can see that too well in the camera. I'm just kind of scraping off some of that dried on Loctite. That'll give us a good surface for the new application of Loctite to grab onto. So yeah, that looks good. Wipe it off a little bit. You could always use your really fine uh, emery paper if you wanted to to uh, clean that up, but that should be should be pretty good. So we're going to set that aside. One more piece before we start assembling things, and that is the slide. Our slide is right here. Okay, not much to the slide. Just dry it off. Be sure there's no problems with it, but shouldn't be. You would have noticed it, I'm sure, if uh, something had happened previously. You just want to check the inside of the slide. Be sure there were no big clumps of Loctite uh, on the inside, dried on, caked on pieces. If there are, um, then you can scrape those off. And you see I scraped off a little piece right there with my fingernail. But it's clean, it's dry. And now we are ready to begin assembling the upper breech block. Well, I just found out that I've shot basically this whole video without knowing that I had to focus the camera. I know a little bit about gun assembly and I know nothing about cameras or camcorders, which by now is probably painfully obvious for you. With that said, I have now attempted to focus the camera so that you can actually see what I'm talking about as opposed to just hearing me talk and watching the blurs move around on the screen. Uh, in any case, we're going to reassemble this upper breech block. This is pretty simple to do as long as you have one essential piece of equipment. Uh, and that is going to be a set of pliers that have a flat end. Like this. Uh, this set of pliers has a flat end on it. Uh, you could use a set of vice grips if you wanted to. Um, this is just what's handy. You want to take your firing pin here with your spring already on it. Put that down in your upper breech block. You see that there? I'm trying to hold it where you can see. And then with a screwdriver that has a fairly wide blade. One. We're going to take and push the pin and the spring. And it takes a little bit of doing and get it to go through the hole. Sometimes you can do it with your fingers. I usually end up doing it with a screwdriver. There we go. Okay, 
Once the pin is through, you want to hold that screwdriver and grab a hold of the pin on the outside with your flat pliers. It's a little easier to do if you're not trying to work a camera and work with the tools. Okay, so I got that tightly, quickly. Your pusher drops right in there, let go, and everything's in. You notice the, uh, the pusher, the little point sticks forward, the same as the slot, and now you could actually push the firing pin uh, forward and back in that slot, and uh, that's the way it functions. So, in any case, you got that in there, uh, and now I'm gonna take a bit of oil and I'm put a little bit of oil down in here with my spring and firing pin. Just a few drops in there. It kind of lubes everything up. I usually just put a drop right on the end. It'll, uh, it'll be a little much, but we can wipe it off later. Then we take our pusher. Some of the pushers slide in more easily from the back, some from the front. It just depends on what yours looks like. But uh, in any case, I just slid mine in. You'll notice that the holes line up there. And now I need to get my screws. When you have your screws, you just want to take a look at them. You may end up needing to run your fingernail around the threads a bit to break off some of that old Loctite. The spencers really have to be tight in order for them to work well, and so we use Loctite. It makes a little bit of a mess in the cleanup, but uh, not too bad. Okay, got our screws clean, and now it's time to Loctite ourselves. We're gonna uh, grab our Loctite blue thread locker. Just put a little drop on the screw threads like that and then drop that right in the slot and you can usually start it with your finger there a little bit let me grab my screwdriver okay we'll just kind of start the first one you don't want to screw it all the way down to begin with just get it started you may have to kind of wiggle the pusher around a little bit. Okay, that one started. We'll put a little blue thread locker on the other screw. Drop that one in. And we get it started. Okay, go ahead and run them down now until they stop. Okay, once they're run down to the point where they stop, then you want to be sure you have a screwdriver that fits really well, fits the slot well. And it's at this point that we are going to tighten these up. These need to be fairly tight, so you have to press down hard so as not to jump the slot or booger up the slot. There we go, pressing down real hard. I hope you can see in my hands not in the way. Essentially what I'm doing is just uh, tightening down these two screws. There we go. Go back and check that one. Yep, it's tight. This one's tight. And with that done, you can check to be sure that the uh, firing pin is moving freely. And in this case it is. When you slide forward, the pin comes out the hole. And uh, now you're ready to go. Now we're going to assemble the upper breech block to the lower breech block. To do that, uh, we need to grab our upper breech or the lower breech block parts, the lever and the lower breech block, out of the water. By this time, the water ought to be cool. At least it is in my case. I have it out here, and I'm just drying off the lever. Make sure everything looks good. Be sure and clean out the water out of this little slot in the lever. Make sure that's nice and cleaned out there. 
Okay, so we have the lever, and then we have the lower breech block. Uh, lower breech block here. We're going to clean all that off. This one's going to take a little scrubbing because it, it, see it's pretty dirty in here yet. So uh, you want to take your rag or your, if you have your toothbrush like we used a little while ago, you could use that. Wipe it off. Uh, take it into your rag and a screwdriver and stick it down in the holes in the top there and swish it around a little bit. There you go. That'll get some of that black out and uh, poke another one through that hole, through the through hole. There we go. That cleans that out pretty well. Stick one bit through there. Mm -hmm. Stick a bit through here. Okay, that looks pretty good. I'm wiping up anywhere I see a little bit of crud. Okay, here's a little tricky spot. We have this extractor here, this spring-loaded piece. And you notice there's a slot here and the, there's a little slot there for the extractor. This is a little hard to clean up. If there's any big stuff, you may want to take your, your little screwdriver. You could to use a pipe cleaner or a Q-tip. You know, something like that would be good. Um, just try to clean that as much as you can. It's possible to take this extractor out by removing the pins here, but those are just pressure fit pins. And if you take them in and out a lot, you'll eventually wallow out the hole and the pin will not fit tightly anymore. And that causes a whole lot of other trouble because if the thing disassembles while you're trying to use it at a reenactment, obviously or or live firing it uh, that's not going to be a lot of fun so I usually don't mess with it leave it just as it is clean out there and that's pretty good and then I take my oil uh, and I put some oil there little drop there little drop here will do work that little spring action got, got it all lubed up there okay and now we're ready to actually put this this together super easy assembly can't get uh, any easier than this basically we're going to take our lower breech block we're going to slip the lever right in the slot there like that and then we're going to find our spring This is our big spring. Now I didn't put this in the in the water, so I'm just you can. Uh, I didn't think about it. I'm just swishing it around in, in some water now. Swish it around in the water, and then wipe it off real good with the rag. If you want, you can run the spring down the uh, edge of a rag like that. That'll get in between all the little spaces. In any case, that is fairly clean. So we're going to take that spring, put it in the upper reach block, and then the spring goes into the slot there in the lower breech block. The back of the upper breech block fits in the slot here, and that's how that goes. Now, uh, once that's in, of course, uh, you want to be sure and line up you can see how that pushes out the bottom of the lower breech block. That that lines up so that it goes into the lever. Okay, we have that. How are we going to get it together? We're going to use the little screw that goes right here. You can see on my little screw there, maybe, uh, if I have the camera focused properly, that there's a bit of Loctite on there. And so in order to get rid of that, I'm just kind of running my fingernail down the threads. That kind of breaks up that Loctite. We're going to want to put some more Loctite on here, so it's important to get rid of the old crusted up stuff. You don't have to be absolutely perfect, but if you get rid of a fair amount of it, that'll make things stick better. Okay, 
Loctite time. Put some blue thread locker on that screw. And then while holding, I'm going to have to come in front of the camera for just a second, but the idea is that you hold the whole breech block assembly down. You'll be able to see the slot line up in here, and then you stick the screw in, and while holding everything together, tighten it down. So let's see what kind of attempt I can make at that. There we go. It's going to tighten on down in there. Once it, it bottoms out, you just want to be sure you have a screwdriver that fits tightly enough. And you're going to want to give this thing a nice turn. Really be sure it's tight and in good shape. So that's tight. Now you can see how the breech block works. It pulls down like this when you open it. And the breech block is assembled now. Last step I usually do at this point is give the whole thing a once over with your preferred lubricant. In this case, I'm just using WD-40. I'm gonna give it a squirt all over. Generous coating. Pat it just a little bit. And then we're gonna set that aside ready to assemble into our weapon. Now we're going to reassemble the rifle. The last step we do before we start putting everything back together is to be sure that we oil the barrel here and we also oil the bore on the inside. To do that, there's any number of ways. You could run a cleaning patch through with a cleaning rod if you have one of those. Um, shotgun cleaning rod set, you know, with a, a patch if you want to do that. There's any number of ways. I typically uh, just use a bit of paper towel, I have some right here, and a dowel. And so what I'm going to do is I, uh, I'm going to take my WD-40, I'm going to kind of wet my piece of paper towel. I'm also going to shoot a little WD-40 down the barrel. There we go. Take my paper towel and stick it in the end here. It's kind of tight, which is good. Then I'm going to take my dowel and run it all the way through. And it'll come right out the breech along with some oil. That's good. And uh, then you can check. You can hold it up and take a look. If that looks satisfactory, that's fine. If you want to do it again, uh, of course it doesn't hurt anything. By this time, the, the piece of paper towel is pretty saturated, so it's plenty slick. Push that through. It ought to come out relatively clean at the breech end. As you can see, mine did. Wasn't uh, a lot of fouling left in there. I am then going to take another piece of paper towel like this and spray it with some lubricant. I get this a little more wet than I did the, the first one. And this one, it's a little bit bigger piece of paper towel. And we're gonna stick it right in the back here like this in the magazine tube and essentially do the same thing. We're gonna push it forward. And push it right, right out into the breech. There we go. And you'll notice, uh, actually, how much crud is in the magazine tube after one of these events. So this is an important step. I'm going to grab another clean piece of paper towel and do that again. Saturate a piece. And poke it through the magazine tube. I have to give it a tap to get it to come out at the breech end. Okay. 
Now with that done, I'm going to go ahead and spray inside the breech block here a little bit and then I'm going to give the barrel a little spray. Some people don't like WD-40. If it's not your thing, you know, use whatever you're comfortable with. And then you take a clean rag and, uh, and wipe everything down good. Be sure and get inside the action here. I usually stick a rag in here and poke it through. You may have to have your uh, screwdriver to help you do that. It'll come right out the top and then you can work that up and down and between the, the cartridge uh, guide here on either side. That will help to clean the sides in there. Yep, mighty clean. I usually take and put a little bit of oil right here in the cartridge guide spring area. Boop. And it'll it'll kind of absorb down in there, especially if you move that that guy. That kind of sucks that oil down in there. That'll just help keep things moving. Now I notice on mine I have a little patch of rust right here on the receiver. Uh, and I want to get rid of that. You can, there's several different methods. I find the easiest thing is some 4 aught steel wool or the ultra fine, the finest that they have, uh, which is four zeros, four aught. So I used my 4 aught steel wool, scrub down the little bit of rust that I had on the receiver. You want to use that so you don't take off the uh, case coloring, but uh, that was all, all that was really needed. We're ready now to install the breech block into the rifle. To do this, uh, you simply slip it in the slot like that, and then you have to prep your lever action screw, which is the main screw that holds the whole assembly together. Same deal as before, I'm going to run my fingernail around the threads, knock off some of that old um, Loctite that was on there. We're going to give this a little new Loctite. go. Make sure to spread it around. This is the most essential part to, as far as keeping things tight. If this lever action screw starts to come out, uh, things get deranged pretty fast. Make sure I have the right size screwdriver. I do. Okay. We'll press the breech block up in there. You may have to jiggle it around to get this in. Then put your lever action screw in, push it down, and then start tightening until it kind of comes to a stop. Okay? At that point, you're going to have to have your torque screwdriver, which I placed right here. This uh, screwdriver, is, again, is short and allows me to really press down because this, this one has to be tight. So I'm pressing down. Okay. And it is tight. Now, it shouldn't be so tight that you can't open the action up or that you strip the screw off. But it's tight enough that it comes out the back a little bit here. And it's definitely not going to go anywhere once the Loctite is, is dry. Now, you can still work this action easy enough. No problem. So that is good. We're done with that. Let's go ahead now and reinstall the lock. On my lock I have a little bit of rust here. Um, the most common place for the rust is right here under the hammer which is where I have the rust on mine. So I'm going to get rid of that. I have my lock back together now. Uh, I just want to, I've cleaned up the rust there with a little bit of steel wool. Everything else looks good. I'm going to give the whole thing a little shot of WD-40. And then I usually put a little drop of, uh, of household oil right on the tumbler 
part, which is the serious moving part. That, that uh, household oil is some little stronger stuff. So, in any case, that's done. We're then able to drop the lock back in the lock mortise. We're going to take the front small screw and put it in. Sure that's tight and then our lock bolt and again if you have the carbine it'll be generally the same we we'll put our carbine our lock bolt in tighten it down the back one doesn't have to be so tight you don't want to over tighten it because you can bind up the action in the lock and then just test it out be sure you're uh, you're working. Appears that I'm working the way I ought to. And it's pretty well clean. Check your magazine tube for some rust. Everything looks pretty good on this one. And give it a little squirt with oil. Place it back in the magazine. And then you can reattach your sling and everything, and you're ready to go. That is pretty much all that is involved with the disassembly, cleaning, and reassembly. The only other thing I would say is once it's all done, sling it back on, spray the whole thing down with oil, wipe it down with a rag, put it in your case or uh, gun sock, whatever you keep it in, and then you're ready to hit the next event. Okay, see you later.